you'll have to. It's on to the red straight away. But... It's all go on uh, salty glass at the moment. Um, basically, uh, a motorboat is uh, in distress just south of uh, Lambay Island. And we are just south of Lambay Island. We certainly are. Side seat here. I think the uh, I think the R and is going to the wrong boat. I think he's heading for a yacht. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he certainly isn't going for the. Um, oops, but never mind. Oops, we can see. But um, it was really nice to see the uh, blue and orange go past. Especially since we have form with that particular lifeboat. Yeah, because this is. We'll not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason we have that wake. <laughs> Here's Odie's. What's this? Yeah, somewhere in there. We're being towed. It's on the channel and here's a link to it before. But yeah, ringside seats. But yeah, he has gone in the wrong direction. He's going that way, but I can see the casualty boat over there. They've got all the gear on board that thing, haven't they? They certainly have because, um, as we said just two minutes ago, that he was going the wrong way uh, because there's a sailing vessel on the horizon, um, on the horizon yeah. and he was going towards the sailing vessel um, and he realised he was going the wrong way so he got them to have a, a communication he was trying to get the guy to count to five for goodness sake uh -huh. not a difficult thing but the guy didn't understand because he's not from Ireland no um, but anyway um, but because they were having a chat that was sufficient for them to um, hone in on the... Yeah, they've got a radio direction finder on board, so they, they, they basically got a bearing on his radio signal and the boat's uh, turned around 90 degrees. I was going to say, and now it's already going in the right direction. And according to RAIS, the lifeboat's now going to the right place. Phew! Because we can see the casualty vessel, but it doesn't have AIS on board, but the lifeboat does, and we can see exactly where it's heading to, and it's heading toward the vessel we can see in binoculars. And, um... So he's the, definitely going the right way. And the distress vessel has uh, also said that he can now see the lifeboat coming straight for him. Anyway, so I'm going back to Yacht TV. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is like at the moment. Yacht TV! Well, the lifeboat have um, just rescued the fishing boat. Um, but there was some couple of in the casualty vessel. Is what casualty vessel. So I thought there was a casualty on board, but it's not. It's just they were all classed as casualties, even though they're not actually injured because they were on the casualty vessel. Got to call it something. I know, I know, but it's it was just. You see what the whole boat is in. <laughs> but anyway, it was a casualty vessel, and uh, but there were some interesting little bits of chit chat that was just. For me, amusing. The first was um, they were from Malahide, they were out from Malahide, and the guy says, We want to go back to Malahide. <laughs> yeah, my car's in Malahide, I don't want to go to Malahide. <laughs> but, um, but basically, it's uh, coming up to low water in Malahide at the moment. The lifeboat draws 1.1, it says so in the AIS information. Uh, and um, the lifeboat just could not get over the bar, so they just said, we cannot go over the bar and just. But, but my car's in Malahide! <laughs> <laughs> my car's in Malahide! Well, never mind my stinking boat. <laughs> he didn't say that, by the way. It wasn't stinking, it was just a drift. 
but <laughs> yeah, his car was in Malahide. Uh, but the second thing that made me just made me laugh was the fact that the um, uh, RNLI told them to get their fishing rods in. <laughs> they were still fishing. You don't know that. They just could have been on like water or something. The side. Well, they could have been, but they had to get them all in. So yeah. um, obviously, if you are going to be towed. Make sure that if you are an ally is going to board your boat, be a good <laughs> idea to get the fishing rods out of the way. <laughs> so, yeah. Moving swiftly on, the wind is starting to come up a bit. Oh my goodness! It's yeah. nowhere near enough yet. I mean, the, the flags are barely moving, uh, but at least the wind's beginning to move. Um, and you never know, we might be able to get off this motor. We're about half an hour from sunset, maybe a little more, and um, I'm just going to keep going. Yep, but, oh, just, yep, keep on going, keep on trucking. Keep on trucking, yep, we want to get home, don't we? Absolutely, girl. Oh, purpose. Two reefs in the Jenny, two reefs in the main. Um, we always have short sails at night because if the wind gets up, you don't want to be overpowered. Uh, the sun has just set. We have now set our course for the North Channel and it'll take us just outside Rockaville. And um, we're hoping that also takes us outside the pots. As far as we can see, all the pots are in there. Yeah, what I basically want to do is I want to get past this um, area where the pots are while it's still got a little bit of light. We've probably got about another half hour of twilight, uh, which will be useful. That'll get us most of the way to Rockaville, but it's starting to feel a bit chilly now, so I think it's time to change into the uh, cold gear. It certainly is. Um, but uh, no, if I can get past the area where the pots are, with the last bit of the light, I'll be fine, because once we get past Rockaville, we'll be far too far out. But well, we're doing nearly six knots now with uh, sail and engine. Oh. Six knots. Now this is a figure we like. Now, six knots. We're letting we're letting it stay on because we can see different type of water up ahead. We're worried the wind might fail, but also we had a foul tide coming out of Dublin and it slowed us down to three and a half knots instead of our projected four and a half that we planned the passage on. So what we're hoping is that we are now making up that slow passage and we're back on schedule. We'll check that out at the next waypoint. Certainly will. Right. I'll go and get changed into my uh, my thermal gear. Oh. Yeah. Middle of August, my right thermal know, gear. I know. <laughs> Last night, the fantasy forecast uh, <laughs> did not bear very much relation to reality, did yeah, it? Yeah, you know, it was supposed to be sort of like uh, wind, sort of like maximum in the gusts of about 18 knots. Yeah. But we saw an awful lot more than that. So I, I, I was on the, uh, I saw a few 26s when I was on the helm, and it's, it's midnight sailing. Yeah, and um, although, you know, don't get me wrong, I can I can cope with that and we can cope with that kind of speed. But it was very swelly midnight sailing. But it was swelly midnight sailing because what we had thought we could do is go out of, uh, outside of Rockerville and uh, just basically take a line for our glass. But of course that meant that we were a lot further away from the shore. We were about 10 miles offshore. 10 miles offshore. And the thing is, that's more than enough to sort of like get your sea state up. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had poor sea state. Now I dropped the anchor, and I honestly, I personally thought that I did my best to be away from a particular mooring ball. That one there. That, <laughs> <laughs> that one that's just right next door to us. But uh, but what's happened when we came in? We were at high tide. 
or very close to high tide. It was dark and the, the deck lights behind me so my shadow winds up in the chain and I think I let out about 40 metres of chain instead of my intended 30. But the thing is, um, we're now at low tide or very close to low tide and um, yeah, the mooring ball is a little bit too close for my liking. So we'll, we'll pull the boat forward manually on the, on the chain, uh, we'll have the engine running but once we're, once we're happy, we're clear of the ball then we can, we can motor up to it. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like, oh. But right. anyway, we're back in Scaries, we came in at 3 in the morning, <laughs> or some, just some stupid time like that. And we dropped down here in pitch blackness, so that was that was a bit of a challenge. But we know roughly where the mooring field is, and we just basically looked for the last boat in the field. Yep. Uh, and tried to anchor outside of that because. But these, fan these phantom mooring balls sneak up on you, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the phantoms. Yeah. But oh, we're off today, and uh, honest to goodness, it just feels like this is a long journey home. It is a long journey, but I think that's the Moran Mountains over there, so we can see Northern Ireland. <laughs> oh my goodness, we can see Northern Ireland! Yep. So, yep, today's job is pick up the anchor, get out there, raise the sails and carry on. Absolutely. Well, let's give it a go.